Buenos días a todos. Buenos días a todos. Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon to all of you, and welcome to this Impact Transfer Forum. My name is Louis Van Kutsem. I work for Ashoka and feel extremely honored to be chairing this forum today. I have the immense privilege of leading our Impact Transfer Program with Zero Project and with Fundación Descubreme since four years now. For those who cannot see me, I am a white male in the mid 40s. I am wearing a white shirt. I have a beard and grayish hair. A couple words on Ashoka, the organization I work for. Ashoka is the leading global network of social entrepreneurs and change makers, people who solve societal problems with innovative and systemic solutions. We select, connect, and provide support to over 4,000 of these social entrepreneurs in 90 countries all over the world. Our goal is to help these innovators scale their impact and change systems for the better. Our vision is a world where everyone is a change maker. We believe having the tools and the opportunities to create change is a human right and should be accessible to all. With several colleagues all over the world, I co-lead a program called Impact Transfer. We support the replication and transfer of proven social innovations in new geographies where they are needed and requested by local actors. So it's all about replicating what works rather than reinventing the wheel. With the incredible support of ESSEL Foundation, Zero Project, Fondation Descubreme, and many other partners over, all over the world, we help each year 10 innovations in clarifying their replication strategy and connecting with replication partners. Partners like yourselves, perhaps, who can hopefully help to adapt and adopt proven solutions in your local context. Each year, we support the 10 selected initiatives through trainings, individual mentoring, matchmaking with partners, and visibility during the Zero Project conferences in Vienna and in Latin America. 41 projects have already participated in our program over the last years and 10 new projects will again be participating this year. But most important, several of these projects have already replicated their model in new geographies with local partners, like Sabanshi Foundation in Turkey, for example, or partners like World Vision, like the Ethiopian Center for Disability and Development, United Nations Fund for Population Activities, the Inter-American Development Bank, and many more. We are continuously developing this ecosystem of replication partners, and we hope some of you today will be inspired to replicate proven models in your context and also become replication partners. This forum will start with a testimonial with, from one of our program alumni before we hear presentations from four other alumni who are all interested to partner with local actors and replicate their work in Latin America. After these presentations, you will have the opportunity to connect live with our speakers in breakout rooms. This will be an opportunity for you to learn more from them, share your ideas, your feedback, and explore collaboration opportunities. We encourage you to use the chat function to share comments, ideas, questions, and you can start now by sharing where you are connecting from and what motivated you to join this forum today. I would now like to give the word to a dear partner of our program, um, Carola Rubia, the executive director of Fondation Descubreme, who will be sharing with us some welcome words. Thank you so much, Lloyd, for your kind words. It is an honor to me to be welcoming you to this session and the alumni of the Zero Project Impact Transfer, a community which grows every year and has been changing the world of disabilities with their good practices and knowledge. As many people have told in the past, I am Carola. Rubia with Fundacidas Juremi, a woman with long hair, a brown jacket and white shirt, wearing 
brown glasses. I'm truly happy to see the progress of impact transfer in this, this third year as partners in the project. Impact transfer is one of the most relevant components of every conference of Zero Project, and I wouldn't miss it for the world. However, we cannot be together, unfortunately, this year, but hopefully we'll meet again with the wonderful network of Zero Project and Impact Transfer in the next months. Uh, in, of course, Vienna and in Santiago, Chile, we know that Impact Transfer team has done their biggest effort to develop a successful program despite the distance. And as many of you know, in 2017, Zero Project and Ashoka partnered to create the Zero Project Impact Transfer Program. Zero Project on one side is focused on finding and disseminating innovative solutions for a world with no barriers and Ashoka on the other hand, has many years of experience supporting entrepreneurs to transfer their knowledge and impacts from one context to the other. They were both able to combine their strength and create the possibility of providing proven solutions with measurable success to different contexts. And in this way, they can truly include people with disabilities for this reason every year the program chooses three initiatives and these initiatives are become a part of a training program of six months to identify the needs goals and strategy with the support of mentors and partners by the end of the program they are ready to be replicated they have the model and they are able to tell their story in a captivating way. In Fundación Descubrimos, we were invited to participate in the first version of the program. And since then, we've participated every year. We have seen from the from the very beginning how when the program finishes, the organizations go back with a new mindset, with needs, uh, models, and goals that are clear in our vast experience working towards inclusion in Chile, we have seen similar needs in Latin America in the Hispanic world. For that reason, in 2018, we decided to formally join the program as partners and bring in our perspective as Spanish speaker to this program. We are convinced that by combining the strengths of zero project impact transfer and Fundación Descubremo, we can truly continue to eliminate the barriers for people with disabilities. So far, impact transfer has supported 41 projects and many of those have already started to be replicated in different countries thanks to the support of many organizations such as yours who are listening to this forum. We'll have the opportunity today of listening to five organizations that are changing the scenario for people with disabilities that are interested in growing their impact in the Hispanic world. Before closing my welcoming words, I would like to congratulate all of the projects that are with us today. We hope to learn from you and know more about how we can continue changing the lives of people with disabilities together. Thank you so much. Thank you, dear Carola, for your kind words and your extremely valuable support um, with our impact transfer program. Um, let me now welcome um, another dear partner of this program and someone um, most of you will, will probably know as well. Michael Fembeck, the director of Zero Project. The Zero Project is around now for exactly 10 years. In the past years, we have selected and awarded more than 700 innovative practices and policies um, working across the globe and across all sectors. The Zero Project is all about change, change for the improvement of lives and rights of persons with disabilities, change by creating innovation, change by looking at innovative practices and policies, change by creating meaningful communities, change by using the now global network of the Zero Project that um, in include some 6,000 people or more that have participated in one way or the other in the past years to the Zero Project. 
Zero Project Impact Transfer takes Zero Project one step further. In 2017, Martin Essel and the Essel Foundation have taken the decision to launch Impact Transfer as a model uh, that brings down the innovations into concrete change. We, for, and for this reason, we select every year 10 innovations uh, that suit best uh, to be scaled across countries. We're doing this together with uh, Ashoka, with Loic, who is with us since the beginning of the Zero Project. And in 2019, we were really happy that Fundacion Descubrame understood the idea, embraced the idea, and is now a, um, a full partner of the Zero Project Impact Transfer. So it's now Ashoka, Fundacion Descubrame, and Essel Foundation running together Zero Project Impact Transfer. Zero Project Impact Transfer is all about sharing, about learning, about improving, about mentoring, and about connecting with organizations, with multiplicators that are interested in, the, in these innovations and can help them to scale, improve the strategy or help them directly on the ground in various ways uh, that have proven to work and to exist. So this is the, now the fourth year of Zero Project Impact Transfer. Uh, those 10 innovators uh, that uh, will join us in the next um, hours are those that have already been presented at the Zero Project Conference in Vienna. These are 10 exciting, inspiring people. You can really forward to, uh, to watch them and see them and we can all be excited to learn about their uh, improvement and about the impact that they are going to create using impact transfer with the full potential of everything and everyone uh, that works with them and supports them. So good luck to Zero Project Impact Transfer, to all the 10 inspiring uh, Impact Transfer fellows and back to you, Luck. Thank you. Thank you very much, dear Michael. Um, well, obviously, none of this would be possible without um, your extremely uh, helpful support. Um, so we are all, I think, very grateful for all the work the Zero Project and the ESO Foundation um, does. Thank you. Let me now introduce our next speaker, um, Senet de Beze. Senet founded Creta and Starks, an app, a mobile app, that enables people with sight or hearing loss to experience fully accessible cinema. Senet joined our program in 2018 and her work and her scaling model attracted the attention of a partner who provided her the funds and advice to scale her work internationally. Senet, thank you for joining us. Would you please share a bit more on your work, your scaling model, and how you benefited from our impact transfer program. Hi, I'm Sina de Besa. I'm the founder of Greta and Starks. With our app Greta and our software as a service tool, we aim not only to give access to, um, for instance, cinema experiences, but even more give access to the primary labor market for persons with sight and hearing loss or persons with sight and hearing disabilities. Our technology is TPN certified, meaning that we have access and can give access to blockbusters all over the world. 70% of the profit of the revenue is forwarded directly to our social franchise partners, associations globally. We want to enable participation and inclusion, but not only in cinema, even more in work and income related scenarios. Any association who is interested is welcome to reach out and for collaboration with us. Through the Zero Project Conference, we found a great partner, a mentor, and we even got a, six, a high six-figure um, financing from this partner. Um, his name is Joachim Schoss, and he's a very uh, rich resource of help and anything we need uh, to be successful in making our social franchise partner uh, successful too. With the franchise, with this financing, sorry, with this financing, we managed to talk to many associations all over the world for replication of this uh, social franchise system. And um, up until now, we have already 
more than 30 um, interested and already assigned partners all over the world. We're very happy about this huge replication interest because the stronger the network, the more powerful, uh, um, the more power um, to the network and also to the uh, amount of films which can be accessible. I'm truly grateful for this experience. The biggest learning uh, is the smartness and power of our partner associations and what kind of uh, willingness they have to make this happen and um, what we can and will accomplish together. Uh, if I had to summarize the impact transfer program in one word, it would be phenomenal because um, it was just phenomenal, um, the experience we made um, there in Austria with the phenomenal team of Zero Project and the absolute phenomenal uh, peers we met there and are now friends. And the phenomenal outcome we have with finding a very strong partner there for replication and also the phenomenal interest we are having for this replication of the social franchise approach and yeah, just in one word, it was and is still continuously phenomenal. And it was a very big turn in our um, replication and growing um, approach. Okay, that's it, I'm done. Thank you very much, Sanet, for sharing your experience with us, which I think illustrates very nicely the power of this program and the whole Zero Project Network, um, the power to accelerate the replication of proven innovations like yours. Thank you. Now, we will be hearing from four solutions for um, organizations that have participated in our program and which are active in Latin America or are willing to become active in Latin America. They will present their work, their replication strategy, their needs in five minutes each. I invite you to listen really carefully, to take notes and to consider how you could play a role in adapting and adopting these solutions in your own context and fields of work. Perhaps you can provide them context, context sorry, or feedback. Perhaps you can implement these solutions in your context. Perhaps you can give them visibility, help to communicate on their work. And perhaps you can even provide funding to help them initiate replication projects in your settings. Use the chat to share comments, ideas, questions. And as mentioned earlier, um, you will have the opportunity after their presentations to connect with them directly for follow-up conversations. So without further ado, let's get started. And uh, let me introduce our first speaker, Dr. Ayesha Huzaini. Uh, Dr. Ayesha Huzaini is the founder director of the Pearson accredited Manzil, a nonprofit focusing on inclusion of people with disabilities based in United Arab Emirates. She was conferred the prestigious Doctor of Letters honorary degree after her PhD from University of Sheffield and was the British Council's MENA region winner for social impact. Dr. Ayesha also serves on the Dubai government's advocacy committee for people with disabilities. Dr. Ayesha, thank you very much for joining us today and please share with us your model for sustaining employment of people with disabilities in the COVID era. Hola a todos. Soy Aisha, el director de Manzil. Hello everyone. I am Aisha director of Manzil. I live in Dubai, but I was in Spain until January. I will present in English because I don't know any more Spanish than this. So we need an interpreter for both the Spanish and the English audience. So let me start. Uh, Manzil is a uh, um, Manzil is a center for people with disabilities. Uh, we are uh, we've been around since 2005. It is, uh, and our main focus is inclusion. We do inclusion at three levels, education, social, 
and employment. Whilst all our programs have been internationally accredited and have won several awards, the one that we are best known for is the inclusive employment program called PRIDE. PRIDE is an acronym for people receiving independence and dignity through empowerment. What makes PRIDE most unique is that it is a one-stop shop which focuses on identifying potential skills and interests of students. Once the student enters the program, we take them through education and skills, training ma uh, match their potential to the employment market requirements, and then continue to support both our graduates and the employers to ensure their success. Pride has won several awards and become a policy influencer at the national level. In now, when, uh, when we, uh, the COVID struck, it was, uh, you know, we had to redo completely the Pride program. Uh, it was imperative to keep up with the employment market requirements that were changing rapidly. We had to go back to first principles and reevaluate both the student as well as the employer journey. The Pride vocational skills curriculum went through a major revamp. Subdomains like computer literacy, technology, and communication skills became the focus. We also had to introduce different remote working skills to the students and train them on the finer nuances of working from home, right from setting up a workstation to management of issues like uh, loneliness and fluid work hours. We also included work ethics where they were taught about punctuality and online meeting etiquette. We added well being and counseling sessions. Employment plans were revamped to ensure that employee productivity was not deteriorating. When dealing with the employers, on the other hand, it was not just about the pandemic, but also the economic crisis that we had to address. We had to review policies for organizations and ensure that the criterion for reasonable accommodation was redefined completely. Technological accessibility took precedence over the physical accessibility. Employers were advised to invest in technology solutions, such as provision of accessible meeting platforms, work monitoring systems, and assistive devices that could be used while working remotely. The training for the organization also shifted focus to ensure that the management provided meaningful employment to people with disabilities and rec recognized the reciprocal benefits of an inclusive workplace. So people with disabilities, could retain their jobs despite the economic crisis. Line managers and co-workers were trained on reviewing well-being frameworks and implementation of individualized employment plans. Hence, we were able to impact lives in a positive way in the COVID-19 era. In this time frame alone, we managed to impact over 20,000 individuals by realigning the program. Before COVID-19, the social return of investment of pride was measured at 1.6, 1, 1 is to 6.4, which means that every uh, dollar that was in, uh, which, which was invested in the pride program, there was a social return of 6.4 dollars, which is six times. I mean, six times the local you uh, the uh, return, and this was twice the uh, local average. The SROI was high because of the massive impact that Pride has on the community. We worked with over 200 corporates, and perhaps that was the reason why even in the COVID-19 phase, Mansell had a 100% job retention rate in the first half of 2020. Despite the economic crisis, we managed to fluctuate at about 76% of retention rate after that. This can again be attributed to a search of uh, web, you know, webinars and uh, other awareness programs that we did, uh, such as on-site and online training and workshops. We focused more on the qualitative impact of uh, the uh, employees. Hence, going forwards, we are uh, looking at uh, we are looking at partners to roll out our programs in Latin America. We are also uh, we are also looking at partners to continue developing the e-learning platform. This year, we aim to reach students globally to train them on the new PRIDE program, which promotes remote working and capacity building. And finally, if you are an international corporate willing to hire people with disabilities from a global market, please contact us so that people with disabilities can continue to live a life 
of independence, dignity, and pride. Thank you very much, Ayesha. Um, it's very impressive to see how you managed to um, turn around uh, your, your work and your programs uh, during this COVID crisis. I think it really shows the leadership and the resilience that we can see in this sector. So I hope this was inspiring for, for our audience and feel free to connect with, with Ayesha uh, later on. Um, let me introduce now our second speaker for today, and we're moving from the United Arab Emirates to Brazil. Um, Alan Thomas is project manager at Escola de Gente in Brazil, a non-government organization uh, which was founded in 2002 with the aim of putting communication at the service of inclusion in society, especially for vulnerable groups such as people with disabilities. Alan will be presenting their Accessibility Promotion Agents project. Dear Alan, it's always a pleasure to hear from you and from Escola de Gente. I look forward to your presentation. Hello, it's an absolute joy to be here today. Before I begin, a quick description of myself. I am a young white man with black hair, beard, mustache, and brown eyes. I am wearing a black blazer over a white shirt. My name is Alan Thomas. I am a young man with the conviction that youth with and without disabilities cannot be separated and are part of the same generation. This is one of many things I learned at Escola de Gente. However, lots of youth with and without disabilities, especially those living in poverty, do not have this conviction and are not connected. And thus, we created in 2011, the Accessibility Promotion Agents Project to reconstruct this logic in the contemporary world. It has a methodology able to increase employability by preparing this generation for an inclusive job market. It aims to train with a 45 hour program, a generation of young persons with and without disability to not discriminate in seven inclusion related modules, such as inclusion and ethics of diversity and accessible communication. It offers full accessibility and communication, allowing participants to experience all forms of human communication together. Since 2011, we have trained 252 youth aged from 14 to 29, 35 of those with different disabilities in these four slums in the city of Rio de Janeiro. The great news that I bring today is that in response to the exclusion brought on by COVID-19, we decided to transpose the methodology online. It still offers full accessibility with sign language, audio description, easy language and captioning. The move to online and the project's next steps are both facilitated by our accessible content app, Venka, which was the first fully accessible Brazilian cell phone app released in 2019 and quickly garnered over 15,000 users and more than 350 cultural producers, mostly due to a campaign that aired on Global Network, the biggest TV network in Latin America. The Venka has also just been acknowledged by the UN as one of 400 projects that most contributes to achieving the SDGs. In the pandemic, persons with disabilities started facing potentially the worst exclusion in their histories as the information flow migrated to an online without accessibility. Venka and accessibility promotion agents are both initiatives that counteract this effect. Our next step for both projects consists of the creation of the Venka network based on the Venka app, which will seek to form territorial networks among youth with among youth to benefit peripheral communities with actions such as registering and increasing the availability of more cultural events and the system so that volunteers can offer their services in the area of inclusion and accessibility in the app itself. Accessibility promotion agents training will be offered in the app, which in turn will create new opportunities for income generation in these territories. 
With this plan, accessibility promotion agents' reach will drastically increase and lots more people will benefit. Our online methodology is now fully consolidated and ready to be replicated. In fact, one of the latest developments that we have accomplished that, that is that we are in talks with an organization from Tanzania, uh, one that hopes to bring accessibility promotion agents to their context. So if you have, or if you want to build a format to bring to your environment, we want to talk to you. So please do reach out. Last, I want you to take a look at the Venka campaign so you get a better understanding of the future of accessibility promotion agents that we mentioned above. Accessibility has met culture. Download Vinca, the first accessible entertainment app in Brazil. The app Vinca on the screen of a rotating cell phone. Blind person with headphones smiles and claps his hands. Birded man laughing. Young lady with Down syndrome smiles. Black guy smiles and applauds using sign language. Escola de gente. Download Vinca without accessibility. Art does not make sense. Well, from me, our founder, Claudia Werneck, and the entire team at Escola de Gente, thank you all so much for listening and for giving us the opportunity to be here. I hope to hear from you soon. <laughs>
One is for the less educated youth who are large numbers in developing countries like India, the 10th and 12th grade. After COVID, all these are online and we teach them English, digital literacy, soft skills, job orientation. To date, we've trained and placed about 21,600 youth, which is seven every day. The sector which was large in COVID for us was the e-commerce, and we placed about 900 speech and hearing impaired in one company alone, which was Amazon. And today we've become the knowledge partner of Amazon and the sole provider of youth across the country. For educated youth, that is graduates, engineers, and the others, we have three academies, the IT Academy, Banking and Finance, and a finishing school. This is a younger program which was started when companies requested us for educated youth, and we placed about 1,000 youth with disabilities in the last two and a half years. Next, please. But we know that this is not enough. Unless you change the whole ecosystem, there cannot be a sustained change in the lives of the persons with disabilities. So we work with the rural communities, with the governments and NGOs, and a grassroots team of our own to do campaigns on ability to disability. We've touched about 7.2 million households to date. But the most beautiful thing is today, our alumni with disabilities are becoming the change makers in the villages because they go and inspire others with their confidence and their independence, both economic and social. In colleges and universities, we set up what we call the Smart Inclusion Center, which won the Zero Project Award this year, through which we make the educators disability confident. We teach them technology, the do's and don'ts. We help schools in the neighboring districts to come in and see what colleges is and tell the youth, tell the school kids the importance of education and we showcase assistive technology. Next, please. In companies, we help companies to begin their journey of inclusion or strengthen their journey. We work with about 900 companies to address their biases at the board level, at the supervisor level. We map roles, we do audit accessibility, sign language workshops, we help them to make the recruitment processes itself more inclusive. And this year, all our services have gone online, which has helped us to go to other countries. The same multinational who's with us. So if you are a multinational out there, please remember that all our services are value for money, value added, and we are extremely good. We have three multinationals who are taking us globally to all the locations, and we'd love to be there in Latin America. Next, please. These are some of the companies which we work with. Next, please. So what is our model? We train online, we mentor, we guide, we help you to measure impact and to put this back into your program. Next, please. The kind of partner we want is preferably in a country where there's a member of business disability network who's passionate like us to work with livelihoods at scale, where we can fundraise together and who preferably has a track record of working in skilling either the disabled or the non-disabled. We are there to support, mentor and hold your hand and learn also from any best practices which you have. Next, please. We do believe this work cannot be done alone and we all need to work together to put our competencies together to build an inclusive world. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mira. Very impressive to see the work that you are doing with Youth for Jobs, very comprehensive programs 
collaborating with all types of stakeholders um, and also very impressive impact figures and, and partners. So I'm sure there's a lot of learnings and knowledge that can be shared um, also in, in Latin America. We are moving on to our fourth and last speaker for today. Um, and we're moving again from India back to Brazil. I'd like to introduce now Guilherme Braga, who graduated in law and also has a master in management and business. He was recently invited to participate in the Leadership in Digital Age Executive Program at the MIT, being considered one of the top 25 influencers of social justice and inclusion in the world. Um, Guillermo is the founder of Egalité, which is a consultancy for the inclusion of people with disabilities and an online recruitment platform, which has allowed the employment of over 8,000 people with disabilities in Brazil alone. Guillermo is currently piloting a replication of his model in Chile with support from Pacto de Productividad and the Scoopame Foundation and many other actors in Chile. Um, Guillermo, the floor is yours. First of all, I would like to thank Pacto de Productividad Chile and Zero Project for the amazing opportunity of being a part of the ICT Innovation for Inclusion. My name is Guy Braga and I'm the CEO and founder of Egalite. We're a company from Brazil specializing in the employment of people with disabilities. Amanda is 19 years old. She just graduated from high school, but she can't find a job. And the reason is not the pandemic crisis that we're facing, is because she has a visual impairment. And most companies only look at her disability and don't evaluate the whole potential. And just like Amanda, there are millions of people suffering from the exact same problem. At Egalité, we develop a technology to unleash human potential, leaving all bias and prejudice behind. Our recruitment platform is totally accessible for all different kinds of disabilities. We provide a full resume, personal data, knowledge, areas of interest, professional experience, data on the disability and accommodation required, but the most important part is represented by this graphic. We have an algorithm that uses artificial intelligence to analyze the skills and the behavioral profile of the candidate, making the right match to the job opportunity and the candidate. Using this technology, we help to employ over 7,000 people with disabilities in Brazil, and we have a database of 65,000 candidates. In our business model, we never charge anything from the candidates. The companies pay for, for our services. But you may ask, why would a company pay for a service? Let me very briefly share the Walmart case. We helped to employ over 900 people with disabilities in an 18 month period. But a very important thing is that the retention rate of this group of people with disabilities was 50% higher than we compare to the rest of the employees. By employing people with disabilities, Walmart was saving $15 million per year in Brazil. We believe inclusion is a process where you have to enable, to provide accessibility and technology, engage, improve the culture of the company, train the HR managers on how to better include persons with disabilities. Employ, to recruit and access fairly the candidates and empower, to create opportunities for people with disabilities to grow in the career. At the ICT program in Chile, Egalité will focus on employ. We will translate and adapt this whole recruitment platform for Chile. And we'll look for local partners and organizations that will help us to provide the support for candidates 
and for companies. This way, these partners will be able to scale their impact, their impact using Egalites technology. Our replication model will be by software licensing. We believe that this will bring business advantage through assertive recruitment of people with disabilities. Using this behavioral profile test and the artificial intelligence match, this is a platform built specifically and not adapted for people with disabilities. So we have a great user experience. Our technology is flexible and can be adapted to different languages and cultures. We have a learning community to exchange the best practice in inclusion. We have a 10-year experience here in Brazil and we want to take it to Chile everything that we learned so far. Our idea is to scale our business globally and the ICT will be a great opportunity to start this project in Chile and we believe that this will bring great results for the employment of people with disabilities. But you may ask yourself what happened to Amanda? She registered in our website and two weeks later was working in a local factory. She has been promoted two times and now has the opportunity to go to college. And we want to go to Chile to help people like Amanda, Alex, Roger, Gildo, and thousands of others that we help here in Brazil. Thank you so much for your attention. Well, we are slowly arriving to the end of this session. Um, thank you very much to our speakers. Um, very interesting um, diversity of models and approaches and uh, lots of potential, I feel, to be replicated in other geographies and hopefully also in Latin America. So congratulations for your fantastic work and, and presentations today. Um, thank you to you all for attending this session. I really hope you found inspiration and uh, ways to support the replication of these proven solutions and ways for you to benefit from these solutions. This session is not over yet. This was actually just the beginning. We will now set up separate breakout rooms in which you can meet each project individually for a live discussion. So this is your opportunity to learn more on their work, to explore collaboration opportunities in a very informal and interactive way. Um, if you wish to use this opportunity, please click on the Zoom link, which has been provided in the chat of this session. If you cannot stay with us now, um, we thank you for your presence and encourage you to connect separately with these projects via the chat function or via email. Thank you for attending the session so far. Uh, please click on the link and uh, look forward to seeing you in the live interaction format in a couple seconds. Thank you.